Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. So today, we are coming in to kind of a critical issue. Uh, we are going to be right out the gate here, we're going to be turning in all of our quest rewards to see what we get. I meant to do it last episode, I know I promised to do it last episode, but I didn't, because we just ran out of time. One thing, I did I did a couple things between episodes, it's been a little bit. Um, I did go ahead and I bred up some bees, okay? Uh, and actually, the bees that I bred up are uranium, silver, lead, nickel, gold, osmium, tin, aluminum, zinc, copper, iron. Uh, these are just basic breeding mechanics uh, that we covered, so they're nothing special. So I just went ahead, bred up all of those. Um, I was going to set up our first metal apiary between episodes and decorate it out, but I kind of got sidetracked with another project. Uh, so we'll go up there and take a look at that here shortly. Also, um, you'll notice that I'm running out of power. I have like no power. Uh, well, every once in a while, it looks like I get a little boost because this this one was actually drained out because I was making rods. But uh, these are kind of running, but they can't they cannot feed the XNet system and the and the pretty pipe system. So my items are moving kind of slow right now. I don't have power in my cables. I can still kind of run my machines. I knew it was coming, and it actually kind of just happened. Uh, but I was steadily, as I started adding more and more things to this, it was like, I can't run anymore. So it started dying on me. Uh, I did make one adjustment over here to the formulaics for the Blazing Archwood. These are both staying stocked. Of course, they're out of woody honeycombs. That's really what we're, what it's running on. But um, the way I'm doing this is high retrievals, stack limiters. Uh, and this one has high priority because, you know, it's making my saplings, but it, it kind of backs up and then it doesn't have to run and i'm also using uh, a storage downgrade because i only want to keep one stack of blazing archwood on hand there's no point in having more than that really uh, of the saplings also cleaned up a little bit over here uh so all this kind of clutter in the middle is uh removed and our mechanical press that does the plates is here uh, with a filter that just checks for plates and then throws them out uh, and there's an xnet connector right down there that plugs onto that conveyor line so the sawmill kind of curves over here. Everything's ran through one central input and uh, it cuts down a lot on our size. So steadily making some adjustments uh, to this area. Also, I had a slight issue. I put a factory hopper down here with collection set to four. That is because randomly, I think because these are butted up against each other, uh, it shouldn't do this. Uh, it's more of kind of a bug, but this will randomly break off my flywheels. And I actually logged on early this morning and both my flywheels had broken off and despawned so i had to remake both my flywheels uh which was great great fun uh so i set this up here just in case uh that ever happens again and it has happened again since then uh it doesn't normally do it but every once in a while it does it now you'll probably notice some sounds in the background if we head up and we head over to here i've started working on this i know this floor is like fairly undone at the moment but it's it's coming it's coming along uh but i decided how i was going to set this up instead of having the prison design i'm doing more of like a mob display design so we have like blazes basals these are the mobs we'd set up before uh this is tarantula hawk severed was really needing the wings and uh so he brought me a tarantula hawk the first one he brought me died so i had to go out and i got one to replace it because it was my fault I had it in too small of an area, but it wasn't dying at first, so I was like, well, it's okay. Because uh, I had a heal spill at the ready when I was moving these mobs. But uh, Over here we have Wither Skeletons, and we have the Adam Wraith in there. Uh, and then over here we have uh, some of our Undergarden mobs. We have the Zombie Brutes. Uh, we have the Wraith. Uh, spider. Uh, this is a mind, a mind Squid or whatever. Uh, it, it drops ink sacks. It doesn't drop the calamari, but I don't really need the calamari. There's no, like, food processing line from that. So I was like, these just look cool. They're a lot more active and they change colors. Uh, so I've got that. And then I've also got our Nautilus in there. And then I've got a Thrasher. Uh, that one was kind of requested by Tyler, so I threw it in here. So we've got plenty of Thrasher teeth. Our Guardian. Uh, we've got a Guster. And I'm, I'm taking some of these drops because it produces so many things. Uh, I'm taking some of these drops over to spawn. Uh, over here we have our moose. And I've still got to plug up his factory hopper. This may change from Dark Prismarine now. Because it doesn't match as much with the Sulfuric Rock. But 
I don't know. We'll see. And uh, up here, we have... This is Bowser. No, you got to stay in there now. Uh, that's Bowser, our bone serpent. And if he would position himself a little bit better, his tail actually spans all the way down. And what's funny is, every time the Drigny's harvest, he produces about a stack of bones and about 16 bone blocks, plus he gives bone serpent teeth. Because they're looking at all these tail segments and getting bones off all these tail segments. Uh, of course, these guys spawn in lava. Uh, these guys spawn in the kind of the deep trenches. That's where I've been finding them. The deep trenches in the cold ocean, uh, which we actually have a cold ocean uh, right over here near Jomega. Um, and then I think that's the only like kind of special case. These guys, of course, spawn in the nether, occasionally in the undergarden, and then in Adam. Uh, but everything else is pretty straightforward mobs. So, been working on that. Uh, I still have a lot of things to add in here. We're going to add silk moths. We're going to add uh, emus. We're going to add uh, Komodo dragons. We're going to add silk moths. We're going to add forgotten guardians and masticators. And uh, But you can see I've got a bunch of this stuff. I actually had more of some of this stuff, but I took some over to spawn. Uh, in case anybody needed like tar tarantula hawk wings or bone serpent teeth or, you know, whatever. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do first and foremost is we're going to turn in some quest rewards. Now, normally I don't use the click to collect all rewards when it's like very specific rewards that you get. I mean, some of these are, but for the most part, we're going to be getting these loot bags. So we're just going to pop it. We're going to see what happens. What all do we get? Here we go. Ah, so many things. Oh my. We got a chicken, apparently. Um, we got an attribute filter... Redstone link, redstone wire connectors, flask of fortitude, a couple enchanted books, anything good? Bunch of ore, vegetable curry. A lot of this is going to go into the overflow because it doesn't have like a slot. So many enchanted books. Adjustable crates, those are actually kind of nice. More precision mechanisms. We still haven't set up for those. I've got so many of them and I don't actually use them that much. Honeycombs. Oh, a mending book. I don't, I've already got mending, but. Oh, a spectrolist. That is perfect. Um, I actually had a plan here before too long to do a spectrolist and they just gave me one from a quest and I don't know what quest it was, but. It's probably one of the Batania. Oh, there was a factory hopper, vacuum tubes, circuit back planes, refined storage wrench, iron mechanical components that completes a quest, smart wrench, network connectors, low extraction, stack limiters. Actually, some really good things in here. A botanist pick, portal charm. I don't have charm slots. I'd love to have a gluttony charm right now, but I don't have slots for it, so... Now I have a feeling my overflow is just like, ah, oh, so many things. Uh, but we did get a storage upgrade five. I'm going to hold on to it for now. I don't really know where I want to use it. Copper chunks. I always need copper. Oh, I'm so glad we got a Spectrolis. Because I had actually mentioned on the server, I don't know if I mentioned in an earlier episode, but I mentioned on the server I was wanting to do a Spectrolis setup, I think, uh, within this, spear, this series. Oh, dispenser upgrade. That's actually perfect because I was planning on using that for something. Coming up. A bunch of these like fluids. Some more enchanted books. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in there. Okay, and that gets us all caught up on uh, items and stuff. So, uh, But the very first thing that we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be addressing our power situation. Now there's actually two methods for power generation that I've come up with that I wanna use. Um, one of them is related to oil refining, and the other is related, because we're, we're working on this sort of like Egyptian theme build, and I imagine uh, it being kind of a rich, wealthy, well-to-do sort of base, uh, and we're actually going to be going with numismatic dynamos. Let me order another brass. No, I, I oh, yeah, because I didn't have copper, and I went mining for copper. Let me order 12 more. I've got to get that real quick. Oh, and we're out of zinc. So I can't order enough copper, or enough brass. I've been chewing through a lot of brass. I've been mining a lot of copper. Uh, I don't know that I've got zinc in here. This is going to be gone. I'm actually going to be setting up something for this uh, in the upcoming episodes. 
or not really for that, but for handling our metals. Uh, I may have to go out and get zinc real quick. Sorry, I thought I had enough, but I mean, I do have the zinc B bread and we're going to be adding that in. Uh, but right now I just, I can't support running a bunch more bees. That's the only reason I haven't just yet. And we will probably be pushing on into uh, brass bees before too long, just because I use so much brass. And the only reason I haven't pushed into that, I'm kind of limiting my, or like controlling how fast I move into bees a little bit to points where it's like, okay, well now, you know, mining this resource or making this resource is just kind of a time thing. It's not really like you know, something that is rewarding in any way. And here soon we're going to have to unlock a bunch of uh, charm slots or trinket slots because we have 81 levels. I have the ability to get a whole lot more levels if I want. What are we going to be missing? Conduits and copper plate. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we'll just do 10, 1, 2. Oh, wait. I, I was holding control for it. Yeah, go ahead and send me 12... The stuff for 12 cooking pots we'll go ahead and get those and they don't stack that's great uh, and then go ahead and send me 10 12 uh batches for the warding stones okay so there is eight brewing stands uh, and then let's go ahead and get ourselves some numismatic dynamos and of course dynamos they're not great power on their own like if you're just making one of them, they're not great power. Uh, however, what we're going to be setting up today is going to give us a base power production that's pretty high. And it's going to end up capping out at like uh, about 7,000 RF with just 12 numismatics, um, you know, a little bit later, which isn't bad. Uh, and it's easy for us to scale this out. This is going to be one of our two power systems. We're out of power. Okay, I knew that was like approaching. That's why I figured, well, we'll go ahead and just start making some numismatics. And that way I can get my power cables moving quickly again. So the honey, the honey did us good for a little bit, but it's, it's reaching the point where it's not, uh, it's not a reasonable thing to go with. Uh, and what we're going to be starting out with, if we take a look at the numismatic dynamos, there's quite a few different options here. Uh, the nice thing about these coins, they are very, very fuel efficient. And I haven't used numismatic dynamos in a long time. But I figure, well, we'll start off with numismatic and then we'll move to oil refining. And uh, I think those are kind of, they're both going to be kind of um, thematic a little bit for our base as well. So, uh, But you can see Lumium coins, they produce 3,200,000 RF. So not bad. Uh, there are some better options that we'll move into later, like... Uh, for example, netherite is 12,800,000, uh, indirium 6,400,000, uh, there, of course there's bees for both of these, uh, but those are going to be the top tier. I was really hoping that the atom golden coins would be an option, but they're not, but that's okay. So what we're going to do, at this point we can pretty much just remove the honey generator, which does mean we're going to have liquid honey backing up at the moment. Uh, but what we're probably going to do, we're going to be addressing bees uh, and kind of revamping our whole bee system in an upcoming episode. Uh, and what we'll do for now probably is just void the liquids. All right, so what we're going to do, this this here is going to eventually be kind of a numismatic bay uh, that's kind of glassed in because I'm planning on doing a bunch with numismatics as we move on and scaling these out uh, to a rather large scale. So, But we're going to start off, I'm going to be just setting up three sides of a power cable for now. All right, so let's just run up our logisticals there. Oh, that's going to have to get moved. And then let's go ahead and we're just going to break off. Uh, don't need basically any of that now. And I think as far as our setup for making the coins, what we're going to do is we're going to have it set up over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a few just to kind of jumpstart this system a little bit. Uh, but we're going to be stealing one of our multi-servos. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in like five lumium. Of course, each lumium ingot is going to make three coins. And each, th each coin produces a uh, substantial amount of power. We're going to be reducing the amount of uh, total power that it makes and speed it up. Uh, here in just a minute, but uh, each one's going to produce 3,200,000 uh, power, so which is quite a bit. And in addition, it's going to be substantially faster 
uh, as far as power production than the honey generator to be sure so I want power to come down here because the middle is all going to line up for this uh, let's go ahead get one more craft of those just run it over like that uh, and then the logistic stuff for here will run down right there and then run across and that should be good and at this point uh, that's all lined up of course we don't have power storage we'll we'll get power storage but as long as our production rate is higher than our usage rate we don't have to worry as much about storage uh, you know early on uh, okay so I've got a few lumium coins here we're going to run that up, and we're going to have the multi-servo be setting here. And let's go ahead and say that you input from the top, you output at the bottom. Auto input's enabled. Uh, you don't need auto output. So now over here, let's go ahead, let's throw in some Lumium coins. Just manually for now. That way I can start getting some power going into this. And right now these are only producing 40 RF per tick, but that's 40 RF per tick each. Uh, but then once we get some upgrades into this, of course, that's going to speed everything up a little bit. And we should be getting power into our various different machines. I'm sure this is filled up at EAS. Uh, if we take a look at the, the two big things are the XNet system. Yeah, you can see that's shooting up in power. And, uh, the other big thing is the pipe system over here, which is already filled back up. 64,000 RF. Um, so we're good to go on power or FE now. And the nice thing is this little bay that we have here, um, which I didn't think about it, but this will have to get moved, but that's fine. I can just move it. The nice thing about pretty pipes and mechanism crafters, they keep all their stuff. So all I gotta do is just pick it all up, move it, and it's set up exact same. You know, keeps all the filters and stuff like that, so. Uh, but each of these, there's gonna be another numismatic on this side, of course. Uh, so each of these will be running 16, and we've got enough space in here for... Uh, basically two stacks, 128 uh, numismatics in here. Uh, so, like I said, dynamos, not a lot of power individually, but you can produce a whole lot of power and scale them out rather cheaply. So, uh, and these are very, very cheap to craft at this point. Cheaper soon enough, but uh, and you can see these are about to back up. So we filled our pipes and stuff. Like that little bay generator, it would have taken it like 30 minutes to make that much power that we made in like, you know, a minute. So... Uh, these are substantially faster th than our single little honey generator over there. But it's like power was like the big thing that was holding us back from being able to scale out uh, and automate quite a few things that I want to get automated. So um, now right now, I don't know if it's worth, because originally I was thinking about uh, going ahead and crafting the upgrades for this, because the upgrades that we'll be running in these, uh, we're going to be running three auxiliary reaction chambers, which are dirt cheap uh, to make. We're going to be running three of these in each numismatic, and then, of course, we're going to be using our integral components. Uh, these are very craftable for us, but I don't know... I don't know if I want to drop fuel efficiency and bother with the hardened until we get that automated. Uh, originally, I was going to, but this is... Realistically, this is going to be so much power with just 12 of these uh, that I don't think it's going to be that valuable for us uh, to do that right now. So I may just wait on that to be honest, uh, and probably just focus more on scaling these out at first, and then do the upgrades. I may do the, the integral components as those become available to us, but now at this point, I'd like to go ahead and I would like to get, and this will actually kind of be somewhat temporary, uh, because down the road we will inevitably get a Lumium Bay, uh, but at the moment I'd like to get another induction smelter. Our induction smelter, I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and I'm going to say the bottom's going to be output, auto output, uh, the top left. Uh, we're going to go left, because uh, I can plug up to our, yeah, our pipe networks right there. That's great. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a pipe here that has a high retrieval module and a stack limiter, and we're going to say that you're going to be requesting for silver, tin, glowstone, and I want you to keep... Uh, keep a half stack of H in here and limit to one stack and then we'll start seeing the stuff get sent over glowstone's gonna be first because it's right next to the B area 
uh, and then the rest of the stuff comes zipping in. And then this is going to start producing Lumium for us, and then that'll automatically get sent down uh, into the multi-servo. And that'll start producing Lumium for us. Let me go ahead and throw that. Uh, oh, whoops. Numismatic. Then we're going to throw our Lumium into there. Let's pop down. We're going to plug up the rest of the logistical transporter system. And I will need one more craft of those. And you can see Lumium coins already coming down the line here. And then if we take a look here, this one's going to fill up first, of course. But you could see we've barely used any power off of... Uh, the coins so far these things go super far and lumium i mean yeah it's going to take us 10 and silver and i have limited quantities of those at the moment but we bred up those bees because we're going to be setting those up and starting to produce you know infinite qual uh, quantities of those so and then long term of course we'll have lumium bees and then it's just basically plug it up to the multi-servo then uh, and remove the induction smelter but i'd like to have to actually make alloys for at least a little bit longer uh, retrieval nodes are your best friend and redstone pipes uh, you know if you want something kind of limited uh, it's your best option for stocking within um, pretty pipes so I've been kind of learning my way around using pretty pipes because it's different you know than most item sorting and, and auto crafting type systems so uh, now over here of course honey it's going to start backing up there's no way around that so what I'm going to do for right now, we're going to be doing a bit with honey soon enough, but for right now, we are going to just be voiding all of it and go ahead and just dump all that into there. And that way I can get this system back up and running uh, because I need beeswax and I've been low on beeswax. A lot of the reason is because at the moment I am, the, the centrifuges are only kicking on when there was fluid spice basically because uh, I was, it was cycling as a power system and then i started running out of power and they couldn't run fully so they haven't been able to run like full throttle all right now the next thing we're going to do now that we have power is we're going to turn our attention over to thermal uh, i've been getting some things prepped yeah it looks like we're starting to we're starting to cap out on coins yeah you can see this one is it's running hard <laughs> all of its power is getting used but i went ahead i got us a controller we're going to go ahead just plug this up into our power line that's going to start getting uh, some power here and then let's go ahead we're going to leave that connector plugged up to the power as well as to the controller because we're going to be using uh, power through this as well and transmitting some power at this point through mech uh, through xnet so go ahead and run that down and as far as where our thermal machines are going to go they're actually going to be getting moved Along with, uh, you know, if they have pretty pipes or something like that, they'll get moved. And we're going to start setting up ourselves a little bay over here for our machines. Now, what I would like to do first and foremost, though, is come over. Let's see. I did get all this walled in, by the way, so we shouldn't have a bunch of mobs or anything. Let me come down underneath to our, our boil extractors because, as I had mentioned, I wanted to get plastic automated. We're going to come down to this, and I'm going to be putting on some red connectors onto each of these. I'm not going to worry about labeling these because it's not really going to be necessary for us. Let's go ahead and just run this out, and we'll just plug it up to the controller. Uh, and this, this isn't going to be chunk loaded, but it'll be running while we're on, so I'm not that worried about it. Uh, it's not going to be chunk loaded right now anyways. Uh, I may chunk load it later, though. We chewed through a lot of network cable. I knew I was going to need a, quite a bit to run it all the way over to the arboreal. And eventually, we'll probably end up having uh, four arboreals, or maybe three or two. Maybe end up having two, and then one with resin, one doing uh, the syrup. Maybe. Um, I don't know. There's a few different things that we can get through those. So, But okay, we've got that. Let's go ahead, for channel 8, let's do an XNet energy system, or a uh, line. And then for channel seven, let's do a let's do an XNet fluid line. And on these arboreal extractors, we are going to set them up to be extracting fluids, because uh, of course we're going to be dealing with the the plastic that they generate. So, and then we'll leave everything else alone, uh, because the very first thing that we're going to be setting up for automation at long last is our plastic or rubber. I mean. Uh, so for making the dry rubber, that was the 
Uh, latex going in with the sulfur for the fluid encapsulator. And I'll probably push these frame stairs out. Uh, so we'll actually be able to have them kind of come out the top and just come down. Uh, but let's go ahead and run some pretty pipes out and down through there. Uh, we could actually probably just go three tall on this. So let's go ahead and clip that off and that way I can do like a base for it. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our XNet cables. We can actually clip that off and come through right here. Uh, and then we'll have a connector setting in here. And this will be getting a retrieval module uh, here in just a moment. But let's go ahead. We're going to set the input to be on the bottom side. Let's go ahead and say that you're going to be sending fluids. And I do want to do this as a bucket uh, because we're going to be dealing with some other fluids. So I do want to filter uh, the machine inputs. So that way uh, it's a little bit more controllable when we add additional fluids. Uh, so the fluid encapsulator, let's go ahead, turn this off for just a minute. We're going to say that you can insert, but it's going to be the latex in this case. And then, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, now it's filled up. Um, it's okay, it'll run through it fast enough here in a minute. And then we also want to be sending this power, so we're going to go ahead, the basic universal line, we're going to go ahead and just set this as insert on, for the power, and then you can... I'm sorry, not insert, extract. Uh, extract the power from here, insert it into the fluid encapsulator. Uh, now this can do 25,000 per tick on the basic lines. Later on, if we needed it, we could do the advanced lines. Uh, but generally, pre like mechanism, maybe immersive, because I imagine immersive machines take a lot of power in this pack, uh, since they are really advanced, kind of like how they were on, well, I think Enigmatica 2 was that way, right? I think they took quite a bit of power to run. Um, but I imagine it's going to be even more so in this pack. We'll see. But um, but generally, the basic, the basic connectors will be plenty of power. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering about what that her, her sound is, I've got some. These are just the Atom Villagers, and I did level them. You can see that this one, for example, sells us four crystal glass for one gold coin, which is kind of a nice deal. Uh, we also have infinity. Uh, we can buy bookshelves for 22 gold coins. There's a few things there. Uh, and then we have a glass blower here. You can see some trades, which actually I think I'm still wearing. Yeah, let me switch these. Uh, and then this one doesn't have a profession at the moment, but I've got a, a couple of professions. Mainly going to be using them for decoration, but there is some small things that will kind of benefit from them. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. I ordered some stuff and I was like, man, it's not working. Now I know why it's not working. I don't know what it is here lately. I'm going to have to, basically I can just split these, uh, you know, apart. Because the way they're butted up against each other. And that's, I mean, that's fine. It's just, uh, but anyways, let's go ahead. We're going to put, we're going to set this up to insert from the right side. And we'll go ahead and put high retrieval onto that. And we're going to say, you're going to be retrieving sulfur. And that way this can start running and using up that latex for us, making our dry rubber. Uh, and then what we'll do is just put an induction smelter. I don't think, um, is dry rubber used, it is used for the block placer. Uh, plastic. Plastic. Yeah, so actually we probably don't want to necessarily send all of it in. Uh, but that's going to start producing our dry rubber. So we'll go ahead and let that run for right now. Uh, then what I would like to do, uh, which really what I, what I'll, yeah, what I'll probably do is just have it stock up and then, uh, we can, we can have it use the dry rubber as it's needed on like a recipe, maybe for stocking or something like that to do the cured rubber, uh, and keep it stocked. I think since we are going to be using the dry rubber, I don't want to send it straight into processing. Uh, okay. So now that that's in place. Let's go ahead. The next machines I would like to automate, uh, which I will set up item retrieval on this in a moment, but not just yet. We'll just let it kind of build up in the machine for right now. Uh, but let's go ahead now. Let's grab our multi-server. I'm going to have to make a few more of these, but I'd like to get these, start setting these up for automation. And let's see, I think 
Thermal Machines and XNAT, if I recall. Might be different in 1.16, but we won't need advanced connectors for these, I want to say. And um, we can do it all through a single line. Let's do our red connector, which really I could run it behind the wall. But at least these, I'm going to be facading the bottoms anyways. Or I'll be, I'll be putting blocks in the bottom, so I'll leave that. But I may do a, a line through the back there and then do the top there. We'll see. Um, but let's go ahead... At this point, we're going to set up an item line, and this is going to be channel 1, this is going to be XNAT items, actually, and, and channel 6, let's do an XNAT item line, because that should be plenty of channels for the way I want to do this. Uh, extract stack, let's turn this down a little bit, once every second should be sufficient. Uh, of course, high speeds... Um, if you don't need them, like for this, I don't necessarily need a super high speed. Uh, don't use them because they're going to be checking, you know. So it'll increase your performance a little bit there. Um, but we'll have like a general extraction line here. Uh, we're going to start off with four chests down here. And this area down here is probably going to be accessible uh, from somewhere in the base, you know. But I'll probably end up clearing out a lot of the sand so we can get down here. But uh, be able to hide a lot of our automation down here. Honestly, if we weren't going with pretty pipes, I'd probably make it visible. It's just pretty pipes I'm going to want to connect to a bunch of sides of these. So, all right. What we're going to do, let's put in a connector here. And then we'll do a connector there, connector there, connector there. And then let me go ahead and just run our pretty pipes down here as well. Uh, so what we're going to do, let me actually break that off it'll make it a little bit more convenient for setup and I'll be setting up more recipes and stuff but and the multi servo press uh, I think the biggest thing for this right now well it's rods uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the gears first I think uh, so let's go ahead let's set up uh, three recipes go ahead and fill this out and we're gonna teach it Uh, how to make iron gears. So four makes an iron gear. Let's teach it how to make uh, constantan gears. Let's teach it how to make... Um, uh, let's go ahead and teach you how to make aluminum gears. So there you go. You can make all of those. And then uh, we just plug this up. Boom. And then what we're going to do, we're going to call this... Uh, this is going to be gear plus line one. Uh, this one is going to be rods plus line two. This one will be wires plus line three. Uh, this one will be coins plus line four. Uh, and then do we have, like for the multi server, is there anything else that we would actually be using? If something else comes up, we have space for another one, and then we can always uh, expand out pretty easily uh, and add additional space if we need to. Um, but let's find the, this is going to be the gear plus line one. Let's go ahead, create, this is going to be an extraction line. And then we'll just go ahead and make this a little bit easier. Let's copy this. This is going to be line four. Let's go ahead and grab XNet item. Xnet item and Xnet item. Uh, and then we're just going to line four, we're just going to paste, control V, of course, to paste it. And then go ahead and paste these. We're just going to be extracting out of these chests. Uh, so those are already set up. Now, later on, we will probably add some filters on some inputs. And really, I guess I'm going to go ahead and filter the inputs. Just so whenever we add additional things, we don't have to worry about it. So. Go ahead, you can send these things on the insert line. Because a lot of our other machines are going to be kind of uh, mixed in there with that. Uh, of course, induction smelters, they're not going to be handled on this this system. This is just going to be for like all the other thermal machines that we're using. But then that way, this system will be able to handle, uh, you know, making the various different gears and stuff. Now, at this point, let me go ahead and just order uh, like an iron gear. We'll make sure that it gets to where it needs to go. And uh, probably 
put that in there. <laughs> so it doesn't try to make a plate. Of course, we can make plates to the multi-servo if there's not a, a mold in there. Uh, it'll make plates, but we want there to be a mold. Um, because our plates are a lot faster going through create. But then the multi-servo will be able to handle uh, a lot of this other stuff. So, And I need to send energy to this. You can see it dropping. Uh, but then whenever this gets finished... Well, actually, I never, I never set up the extract, so... And let me go ahead and grab that, just paste it over for the power. Uh, for the insert, I wasn't able to test what I was actually wanting to test for this. Uh, because that wasn't in there. Uh, but at this point, we are going to uh, do a little something real quick. Let's see, the crushing line, we have this, we have this. Uh, let me go ahead... And I know these chests are all, like, compressed together... That's because actually leaving space open, it's not going to be important for us. But let's go ahead and we're going to teach it how to make ender dust. So there's your recipe. Just plug that over. And right over here, we're going to be setting ourselves up a cooking pot for some automation. Let's go ahead. Let's break this open. And right back here, we're going to have this connected up to the XNet system because it's going to be filtered. Uh, let's just run this up and then we'll have the connector be there that's the east line let's go ahead and disable the east line uh, and we're going to set up our cooking pot here and this will be facaded in and then on channel one we're going to use this on the channel one line let's go ahead we're going to set up the cooking pot as an insert and we're going to say that you can send we're going to say that you can insert Enchanted Ash and Ender Dust. Now, Enchanted Ash, I don't have automated just yet. We will be, uh, but that's going to come in with our smelting system, which we're going to be doing here soon. Uh, so for right now, I'll have to make that manually, but it's super fast. not hard to do. Uh, so you can accept these items, and then we'll go ahead and set ourselves up another pipe that just feeds in the same place. This one's going to have a medium crafting, and we're going to say that uh, we're going to teach it the calcs of end uh calcs of end is actually no i only want two well i'll just i'll set the output up here in just a moment uh and if i throw this into there it's going to get pulled out and sent up to the cooking pot oh it's going to need to come in the top huh okay well we can deal with that actually extremely easily let me go ahead and get me some calcs of end that's going to enable us to deal with it uh, there's a couple things that really heavily relates to our uh, storage system that is going to require us having the calcs of end uh, available and ideally easily obtainable, so automated. Uh, let's go ahead and finish up that recipe. And we'll just plug that up. And also it kind of ties into our automation system and stuff. So, All right, we got that. Now let's pop over. And I want these... And let me go ahead, I would like to upgrade one of our red connectors at this point to an advanced connector. There's our first advanced connector. That's all I need right now, but uh, let's go ahead then break off that connector. And instead, we're going to use an advanced connector here because this is side specific. So that's where the advanced connector really, really gets to shine for uh, XNet. Okay, so you can insert both of those. And I went ahead and smelted up some of this. And we're about to have a server restart, but I'm going to say that you insert, but it's going to be on the upside. Okay. Uh, and then if I was to throw in that and that, and we pop up, we should see it running. And now it can make us calcs of end. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and turn our attention over to the entangled block. Uh, you can see it can be bound to blocks in the same dimension up to a thousand blocks away. I think this is within our means to make this now. But let's go ahead and get ourselves a bunch of red string. Oh uh, yeah, but this does require sunstone. Um, let me see if I can just make one at the moment. Uh, we can get by today. I mean, it means I've got I've got to push into nature's aura. And originally, actually, we were going to do a bit more with this integral blocks, but I forgot I was going to need living rock for that. So we'll have to wait until we fully get into Nature's Aura to get that up and going, but 
but we're basically going to be using disentangled blocks as a cheaper version of uh, ender chest okay so there was our very first entangled block and then for the entangled binder go ahead and send me what you can okay so there is our entangled binder let's go ahead and grab that and we do get a quest reward sorcerer's delight we're going to end up using a lot of entangled blocks and replacing a lot of our chests and pipe net networks with entangled blocks uh, but for right now we're just going to be doing one and we're going to set this up like right here i think and then let's go ahead and attach a connector onto that and what we're going to do is a lot of our inputs are going to be set up this way and in this case we're going to go ahead and set up this input this way and we're also going to have some other nifty nifty things but we're going to be linking in this case to this crystal chest so we're going to go ahead and grab that block and then we're going to come over right click that and this is now bound to our crystal chest so we're going to say um main input line is fine and that way it's going to wirelessly instantly move items to our general input uh so let's go ahead on channel six this is our input line we're going to say you can insert your items into that okay uh, so if we take a look now the request that we had for the iron gear should be filled and it's probably on its way now there we go okay now at this point let me order one more though because i didn't have the input in and i want to make sure it's not going to draw the iron out as it comes into the metal press well actually i need to order it just sent me the one that I had thrown back in there. I was sitting there waiting and I was like, this ain't right. It never sent anything over. And I was like, oh yeah, I threw that in there. Okay, so the iron comes in. Perfect. It's working. So, okay. Yeah, so that, that works fine. I just wanted to make sure. And of course, basically these just act like that block. You know, we used them on ATM Spellbound to wirelessly move elemental craft element. Um, and we'll be using them on here for a variety of things. Okay, now at this point, let's go ahead. I want to set up the extraction for this. Uh, and if we just set it to like extraction stack 20, it can pull it out. Uh, my only concern is it might, I'm probably gonna filter that because I imagine it's gonna be able to extract the imports too, or the inputs. Uh, so let's just go ahead, just to be on the safe side, we'll just throw that in there. We got plenty of filter slots, so. And that way our calcs of end is automated as well. And then I've got to make more multi-servos, like three more, and set them up identical to this. I'm not gonna be setting all those up on camera. All right, now let's go ahead and set ourselves up an induction smelter and a pyrolyzer. And we're gonna go ahead and say that you can, uh, let's just do insert. Uh, you can insert on this side it's going to have high retrieval and we're going to be inserting sulfur before we do that though let's get a stack limiter um, just to make sure that we only keep so much sulfur on hand and i did set up a bunch more additional recipes between cuts as well uh, various different things here machine frames for uh, thermal and and such and such uh, just a bunch of basic crafting recipes so uh, we're gonna say limit to one stack and let's say keep 32 that should be sufficient in there now we're gonna set this to insert and then we're gonna come in behind this we'll just go ahead and run our network up uh, and we're gonna have a connector also automated connectors and uh, just a wide variety of things we're gonna do insert extract on the induction smelter here um, then we are going to, on the pyrolyzer, we're going to say extract only on the us. Because this is stuff I'm going to want running pretty much consistently. And on the pyrolyzer, we don't need a stack limit. Um, what we're going to do is set the right side there to insert. And let's say you're going to be retrieving coal. Okay, so that's got the sulfur. That'll get the coal here in just a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to plug up another connector there. And we're going to call this Q 
cured rubber. We're going to be adding some redstone control here in just a moment to all three of these on this side. Uh, and then over here, we're going to say cold coke. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this as a connector because we're going to have another machine up here lighter. Uh, this will all just kind of be basic automation from then on, but uh, we'll go ahead and go over how we're going to be setting these up. Now let's go ahead and start feeding some power into these. So we'll just paste those. There we go. And those have got power. This is starting to run. And let me see. The output for this, uh, we're going to have it be on the bottom. Uh, you can insert and extract there. Uh, now what we're going to do, let's set up a, actually I guess channel 5, we're going to need this to be a logic, XNet logic line. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that. Uh, we're going to be using Corporea Crystal Cubes again for this. Uh, let's go ahead and set up that, that. Let's go ahead and say coal, I'm sorry, coal coke. Uh, the dry rubber and the cured rubber. We could also check for tar, but I don't think we'll need to. What we'll probably end up doing for tar is if we find ourselves running out of tar, I'll probably set up a bitumen system that processes to make cold coke and then processes the heavy oil down for additional tar because uh, we can do it that way. And that way we'll have some refined fuels coming in, uh, though I don't think we'll have much use for it other than just literally turning it into LPG probably. Uh, so we'll probably tie that into our LPG system as kind of like, if we need tar and we get down to critical numbers, then we can make it through that, but otherwise we will make it through this system. So really I think three should be good on this. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just run out comparators and then have the connectors feed off of those. And we will be automating um, like our, our lightning system has been working perfectly. It's surprisingly good because I thought, man, I'm going to have some issues maybe with this, but no, there's no issues because it only drops when it has a full recipe and uh, everything's worked smashingly, um, to be honest. But we are going to be covering setting up the conduit automation because of course that's five items, a few more items there, uh, but we will be covering that on camera. But uh, beyond that, it's all pretty much straightforward. I've got, I'm actually going to add firmament and sparks uh, to that here pretty soon because those are only three items but conduits of course is five we're going to be automating that slightly different so probably after this this episode i'll automate those because we're going to start using a bit of these um, here pretty soon oh and by the way we can we can order formulaic assemblers and all that stuff now just i was ordering like bunches of them um <laughs> between cuts and it's great because we can just order big batches uh, like mechanical crafters for example we have those automated fully now as well so uh, well except for the blood magic part of things but that's not a big deal because I can make that stuff in bulk okay so this is the cured rubber logic uh, what we're going to do we're gonna we're gonna set up a couple logic lines here uh, so this one here let's go ahead and just create the us uh, this is gonna be a sensor and we're going to say redstone is greater than or equal to, uh, let's say nine for this. Uh, Cause that's going to be four stacks. Uh, so check to see if the redstone is greater than or equal to nine. If it is, then emit on the purple channel. Uh, on the dry rubber logic, let's go ahead and just actually copy this and we'll just paste it over. Uh, but we're going to change the color to the cyan color. Uh, so this is cured rubber and dry rubber keep you know about four stacks and we may end up upping that but if i decide to it will be with it'll be after we get drawer upgrades in it and then the cold coke logic let's do the same thing um, but this time the i don't know p yellow color uh here all right now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, an extraction line here for the cold coke and the cured rubber and we're going to say it's going to be extract stack 20 uh, enable on the P yellow color. And then let's say cured rubber is the the one that's on the purple. Uh, let's do extract stack 20 on the purple color. Uh, and then the dry rubber line, you can extract stack 20 on the cyan color. Uh, so now if we take a look down here, we should see a bit more of this stuff has gone into the system. Yes, but not the cured rubber. 
And then let me go ahead and grab a piece of this dry rubber. And what I want to do is basically I just want to cycle some of this back in for making the, the cured rubber. So let's go ahead and add dry rubber to that. And so we should start seeing some dry rubber come into the system. There we go. And of course, that's going to start running the induction smelter, making our cured rubber for us. And so that way we don't have to worry about um, making cured rubber at all. You know, I had I had the recipe in a separate induction smelter over there uh, with a few other recipes, but I'd rather just have that. That's something we're going to be using consistently for a lot of stuff, especially anything related to thermal machines and above uh, is going to be using a lot of that. And that way we can uh, we can automate this without issue because everything else uh, in this is automated. So and I guess we'll change the back to only output. Let me see. Actually, I think I set the logic lines up backwards. If the, yeah, actually, I want this to be less than nine, then it runs. Less than nine and less than nine. So now it should be extracting at this point. There we go. And that means we're getting cured rubber into the system. My bad there. Um, but you could say these are steadily building up in the system. We're going to be getting that cured rubber. And of course, once we hit about four stacks of any of these, it's going to stop uh, that system from running. Now, the last thing we need to do is handle the creosote that's coming in. We're going to be needing a lot of creosote fairly soon. Uh, so what we're going to do is set up a fluid storage. Uh, the fluid storage for creosote is going to be set up right over here. And we're going to be using small fluid tanks for this. So... Let's go ahead and grab our pneumatic wrench and we're going to just right click, right click. And so this is basically making one giant tank. Uh, and then over here for the creosote, so we'll say that you can insert creosote. Go ahead and re-enable and then let's go ahead on the cold coke line, let's go ahead and say that you can extract uh, because I do believe we're going to start moving into the engineer school stuff. Um, I don't know if it'll be next. Originally, I was I was planning on it being next episode. But I think I'd like to at least do an episode or two of magic. Then come back over to it. Because I want to do some magical automation. As well as actually get Nature's of War started up proper. Maybe start up Batania Man Managin proper. And maybe start up Blood Magic proper. Because all of those are kind of in limbo. Uh, actually, these are automated. Although the PCBs themselves aren't automated. Or the uh, printed circuit boards aren't automated. Um, but we do have a few in stock. And I did go ahead and set up this recipe. Uh, I still have to automate the connectors. I've got the network cables automated. Uh, Invar gears are automated. And these are going to be automated soon. So probably all of this will be automated by next episode. So we might be able to start upgrading some of our thermal machines. But anyways, at this point, I know it's wrapping up point four this episode. So next episode, when we come back, like I said, we're probably going to do a bit with magic. Um, between episodes, I'll get some ba some more basic crafting recipes automated. Maybe a couple other basic thermal setups in place. Um, although the stuff that we automate today, you know, the plates, the gears, the wire, uh, the creosote, the rubber, the cold coke, all that stuff, super, super vital for us. And that actually allows for us to uh, freely and without worry order most things that we've encountered thus far. Uh, we do still have to automate pneumatic craft, so we will be doing that, fully automating out that mod, super easy. But we're finally at the point where nothing's critical. Power's not critical. Storage isn't critical. Everything can be ordered and ran. Like I said, we've got some, some bigger crafts automated now, starting to be automated like formulaics. Mechanical crafters, uh, most of creates automated at this point, and uh, we're setting pretty good. The only thing is chromatic compound, which we'll automate at some point because we will use it a little bit later on. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.